in the bathroom scene were in a wide shot. There isn't that much intercutting. And the point there was I wanted the audience to be witnessing it without, with as little disturbance as possible. So you notice that the form is very clean and you're just watching it all play out. Whereas in the rape scene, you needed to feel my hand. You needed to have me, you needed to have the filmmaker go inside because it was such a complicated structure. I knew there was gonna be a lot of intercutting. I knew that the way to keep it subjective was to be remembering it through Brandon's perspective. But particularly in the stripping scene, it just seemed right that, um, that you didn't have that interference. And the, the amazing thing for all of us was that was probably the most violent scene emotionally to film. I mean, the rape scene, it didn't have the same tenor that that one had. Uh, you know, Peter left and threw up. I got sick at the monitor. I mean, you know, it was just, it was the most disturbing thing to watch. Claustrophobia it was really tight. <laughs> If it breaks any, you know, artistic boundaries, um, maybe it's in the form of it. I wanted it to be a bit like, you know, like language poets or films that I find incredibly moving because they're visceral. You know, I wanted at all points that, that you felt this movie, that Brandon got underneath your skin the way he got underneath my skin. You know, the film came out of a wound. That was, I love Brandon and Brandon got killed and that was wrong. Uh, and I wanted to honor his death. And what I realized, the difficulty that I had, why it took five and a half years to make this movie, was A, it was difficult to, find, to write the script. Um, it was impossible to cast Brandon. The world wasn't ready to give us another Brandon until Hillary came along. The world did not see how it fit into the world's need to make sense of itself. When we were shooting, Matthew Shepard was killed. Um, it sent a, an echo of terror through us, which was what well, we were fighting so hard to turn into fiction. And fiction's fun. Fiction's a lot easier than the truth. Um, was happening all around us. So, I mean, that the truth was, was still happening and it was terrifying. As I saw it being covered in the media, it was very sensationalistic. Um, it was really concentrating on the spectacle of it, on the brutality of the crime. So I think that what Brandon did broke boundaries and yet I think that the portrayals of Brandon did not break boundaries. If anything, they, uh, they reaffirmed the boundaries that were already intact that had destroyed Brandon. So that was where I started. I think that there is a way that we can communicate more with the mainstream. Um, in terms of telling our stories and making sure that uh, if there's a way to invite the mainstream into our culture. Um, and if that's not threatening, I think that that's really helpful. And that was, I think, what I was trying to do with Brandon, was make sure that Brandon is the queerest thing that ever walked the earth, which I love. But at the same time, Brandon can be made understandable to all people. So what are you going to tell them? I'm going to tell them what they want to hear. I'm going to tell them what we know is true.